Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by a posting on the bulletin board in Village Hall by mail to the Ridgewood News, the record, and by submission to all persons entitled to same as provided by law of a schedule including the date and time of this meeting. Roll call. Councilman Hache. Here. Councilman Seaton. Here. Councilman Voigt. Here. Councilman Walsh. Here. And Mayor Newton. Here. Please rise with a flag salute. Please join for a moment of silence for all those serving our nation and for our first, well, our first responders. Thank you. Thank you. First, we'll do our acceptance of financial reports. I move the bills, claims, and vouchers and statement of funds on hand as of July 31st, 2016 be accepted as submitted. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Uh, I'm going to comment before I vote on this because in the um, bills, claims, and vouchers, there is the bill for the um, garage video that was put on the website that um, neither myself nor um, at the time Councilwoman Knudsen, now Mayor Knudsen, didn't know anything about. Um, I don't agree with it. It is potentially illegal. That hasn't been, um, that hasn't been settled yet. And, uh, it could, um, it, there, there's also an ethics violation tied to it. But unfortunately, it is in, lumped in with all the other bills, claims, and vouchers. So not to hold anything up, I will vote for the bills, claims, and vouchers with the caveat that I am not supporting the propaganda video that was put on our website. Okay, so that's a yes. Yeah. Um, right. I have a similar concern to Councilman Seedon as it relates to that particular bill. Um, however, as Mike had said, um, it's uh, entangled in a whole bunch of other bills, so I will, I will say yes. Okay. Walsh? Abstain. And Newton? Okay, so I'll make my comment. Uh, I similarly object to the invoice to Studio 94. I was unaware of the video being produced, and I would have um, objected at the time as an unnecessary an improper expense of taxpayer dollars. I'm voting yes, but that's my note. Okay. So just to confirm, it was four yeses and Councilwoman Walsh abstained. Correct. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Okay, we'll go on to approval of minutes. I move the, the Village Council minutes of July 1 and July 20th, 2016 have been reviewed by the Village Council and now available in the Village Clerk's Office be approved as submitted. Second. Ashe. Yes. Seaton? Yes. Roy? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Excuse me, I have a cold, I'm struggling here. So we do have a couple of proclamations, and the first one, Drive Sober, Get Pulled Over, 2016 Statewide Crackdown, uh, will be read by Deputy Mayor Seaton. Thank you, Mayor. Whereas impaired drivers on our nation's roads kill someone every 53 minutes and more than 10,000 people die each year, and whereas in 2014, there were 9,967 people killed in drunk driving crashes in New Jersey, and 64% were the drunk drivers themselves. And whereas a reduction in impair impaired driving will save lives on our roadways, and whereas an enforcement crackdown launched nationally in 1999 is planned to combat drunk driving during the busiest travel times of the year through sobriety, effective checkpoints, and wandering patrols. And whereas the state of New Jersey Division of Highway Traffic Safety provides grants to local law enforcement agencies throughout New Jersey, establishing and encouraging them to participate in the 2016 Labor Day Drive, Sober, or Get Pulled Over High Visibility Enforcement Campaign, which runs from August 19th through September 5th, 2016. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood pledges to increase awareness of the dangers of drinking and driving through their support of the Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over Labor Day Weekend Drunk Driving National Mobilization. August 19, 2016 through September 5, 2016, in the Village of Ridgewood and ask that all residents join together in supporting this initiative. Very good. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, the next proclamation is declare September Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month, and that will be read by Councilman Hache. 
Whereas ovarian cancer is called the silent killer because its symptoms are often vague or subtle, making ovarian cancer a leading cause of cancer death among women and the leading cause of gynecologic cancer death in the United States. And whereas more than 20,000 women in the United States are diagnosed in the early stages of the disease and approximately 15,000 women die from it each year. And whereas the Kaleidoscope of Hope Foundation, a local nonprofit group founded by Gail McNeil of Chatham Township, who was inspired by her own experiences, raises funds for ovarian cancer research and increases awareness of the disease and its symptoms, and wishes to remind the public that September is Ovarian Cancer <coughs> Awareness Month. And whereas uh, Kaleidoscope of Hope Foundation, KOH, has partnered with the National Ovarian Cancer Coalition, NOCC, to support the Turn the Towels Teal campaign, and whereas there is no early detection test for ovarian cancer, which is why the Turn the Towns Teal campaign is so very critical in promoting awareness of the symptoms of ovarian cancer, fighting the disease, and supporting the women who bravely carry on the fight. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood calls upon citizens to raise ovarian cancer awareness, which will help Americans live longer, healthier lives, and hereby proclaim September 2016 as Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month, as we rededicate ourselves to the pursuit of new and better ways to prevent, detect, and treat this devastating disease. Thank you, Councilman. And our last proclamation declares September National Preparedness Month will be read by Councilwoman Walsh. Whereas National Preparedness Month creates an important opportunity for every resident of the village of Ridgewood to prepare their homes, businesses, schools, institutions of higher learning, houses of worship, and community-based organizations for any type of emergency, including natural disasters and potential terrorist attacks. And whereas investing in preparedness can reduce fatalities and economic devastation in our communities and in our nation, whether the emergency is large scale or a smaller local event. And whereas National Preparedness Month is a part of a governmental effort to have federal, state, local, tribal, territorial, private, and volunteer agencies working to increase public activities in preparing for emergencies and to educate individuals on how to take action. And whereas emergency preparedness is a personal responsibility and every resident of the Village of Ridgewood is urged to make preparedness a priority. And whereas the 2016 National Preparedness Month theme, Don't Wait, Communicate, make your emergency plan today, encourages residents to plan with their community, their family, and for their pets to stay safe and communicate during disasters. And whereas the most important step to be taken to help our local responders is being able to work together as a team to ensure that individuals, families, and communities are prepared for and will recover quickly from disasters and emergencies of any type. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood, Bergen County, New Jersey, hereby proclaims September 2016 as National Preparedness Month and encourages all residents and businesses to develop their own emergency preparedness plan and to work together to create a better prepared community. Great. Thank you, Councilwoman. And with that, we'll go to comments from the public not to exceed five minutes for a total of 30 minutes. And as you come up to the microphone, I just really want to ask everyone to keep their comments as best they can to the five minutes so we have an opportunity to really hear from everyone. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Jim Griffith, 159 South Irving. I just want to, if I talked about something, anything but parking, you'd probably ask me to leave. So I just want you to know it's on parking. And I just want to minutes. continue the conversation, Susan, that you and I had at last meeting. I question your ability to say that the parking lot was too small, too narrow, because you were an elected official and not an engineer or an architect. And after everything was over, you corrected me and you said you I wanted to speak, and you said that you had read it and that you weren't making a statement, you were passing on a comment to me. Because of my advancing years, I'm, I don't respond as quickly as I used to. <clears throat> but it dawned on me that you've been here for the last two years, and you saw that we went out for bid, and we had response by four qualified construction companies to put a parking lot on Hudson Street. 
We picked the one who was most familiar with Ridgewood, and he's the one that, that knew the parking problem in its fullest. And he came out with that monster that scared everybody away as it should. It just about closed down Hudson Street. And it was the reason we got that lovely Christmas card in the mail right before Christmas showing a dilapidated picture that, after all, was pretty close to the truth. Uh, but you were there in all of these discussions. So for me to think that you think that uh, based on what you've read, and you didn't tell us what you read, and it's not important, that because of that, you don't think uh, there should be a parking garage on Hudson Street. That came as a shock to me because you've seen the evidence of the other people, the professional people. And as we left it before the old council and you came on, there was this, what is it, 4D or the last configuration, and uh, it was a question that might be too large, and you wanted to maybe make that a little smaller, mm -hmm. smaller, and that's what it was there. So uh, it's hard for me to swallow, or I, I should say understand, comprehend. It's hard for me to comprehend why you might not why you might think that the garage can't be thing because the, it's too narrow. I will agree that what we need is a five acre pasture, all right, to put a, a massive garage on. We don't, have, we don't have that. We take what we have and fortunately for us, the town owns that piece of property, so I was happy. So I just wanted to clarify it and uh, make you think about that, or straighten me out. That's been done before. Thank you. Okay. So, so just real quick, I do want to say that the report is not something. It's not something I just read. It's not something that I just read somewhere. This was a report that was issued by Walker. It was an initial Walker study, and it stated unequivocally to this council that the lot is too narrow for an efficient self-parking garage. So, I, and I never said no garage. What I did say is, if you can find a garage that will fit on that lot, then I'd be interested in seeing it. But the report in March of 2015 that this- what? March of 2015 that the village paid for, the line in that report stated, the Hudson Street lot is too narrow for a, an efficient self-parking garage. That's all I stated, okay. so that's it. Okay. We're good. Okay. Thank you. And you've realized that under the circumstances, we might be willing to accept something that's not 100% perfect. Well, of course I understood that. Okay. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening. Good evening. Holiday 374 Evergreen Place. Looking at the agenda, I see you're going into executive session at the end to discuss personnel, the village manager's office. We'll just put the microphone down. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. That's Thank fine. you. <coughs> uh, Rorick Holliby, 374 Evergreen, Ridgewood. Uh, item 19 on the agenda, it says personnel, village manager's office. What's this all about? Well, I don't know that we can discuss that as a matter of law because it is a closed session item. Yeah. So well, we can't go into the details of it or anything like that. I have a feeling my friends, the Vocalantes, who are out to, to get Roberta's head, know what it's all about. And I'm sure you've been talking to your supporters. If you are talking to your supporters, you should talk to all of us. This is one point. My second point, <clears throat> I'm getting extremely concerned by how creative you are becoming with legal fees. You know, uh, Mr. Voigt is about to establish a new Benghazi committee here to actually do what he needs to do to find something that's in the mind of people. So I'd like to know in the last couple of years what was spent on outside legal fees 
and what is being budgeted for this year. Because by the time you counter sue the hospital, by the time you take on this uh, another alphabet soup committee of good meaning citizens, by the time you take on the void committee, uh, we're going to be incurring a lot of legal fees. Does anyone have any idea what you'll be spending? Well, that's certainly information that's readily available <coughs> by way of an OPRA request. So I think that if you're interested in, you can certainly file any um, OPRA request for that information. Yeah, and I'm as to, to minimize filing another OPRA request, which me? keeps everyone busy. But, uh, but I think yeah. also, uh, uh, Rurik, um, we discussed this a couple of meetings ago uh, in public, yes, yeah. and I think um, we do have the numbers. I just do not have them off the top of my head. We have identified it as a potential risk uh, going forward, and if you recall, the perspective we took during the budget process was to budget basically flat to last year because what we didn't want to do is assume a huge uh, legal budget that would cause a taxpayer issue. The, the approach was going to be if, in fact, we hit that number, um, that we would go in for emergency spending that would come back into the 2017 budget or we would go to bond for it. But I don't have the numbers. Unless Bob has them, I don't have them at the tip of my face. But well, maybe we're, I, we're, said, you know, I could send someone an email and get the information. But thank right. you. So, so thank you. Great. Yes. Good evening. Uh, good evening. I'm Mary McBride, 875 Harristown Road in Glen Rock. And I'm here to talk about um, the AL1 ord ordinance that is under consideration in Glen Rock. This is the ordinance that would allow a high density development to go in in the Prospect <coughs> Street neighborhood near, between Rock and Harristown Road. Uh, in order to do this, the investor who's looking for the zoning ordinance requires uh, that he purchase a small parcel of land from Ridgewood. And having lived in Glen Rock for 18 years and near where this development is planned, I just wanted to suggest that you know this is really a small single family, uh, a, a very strong family neighborhood, a lot of single family homes, and introducing a high density development would really change the character of the neighborhood. There are a lot of young families that have moved in recently who came in with the understanding that they were purchasing uh, a home in an area that was zoned single family. Uh, in addition, there are very strong concerns over the traffic impact, the safety, in terms of prospect already being a, a very busy road at times of the day, uh, environmental impact. I know they're having lived there, there, there are some flooding and other types of concerns. And it's really not just those of us who live in the neighborhood, but those in other parts of Glen Rock who are concerned really about the long-term effects and what kind of doors this opens for other such develop, developments in Glen Rock. So I really uh, just urge you to consider this when this comes up again in terms of the parcel that the developer is looking to purchase and um, bear in mind the impact that that would have. And thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Mike Miller. Uh, I live on Pamela Poe Court in Glen Rock. Uh, I've been in Glen Rock for 23 years. I'm here to plead with you uh, not to sell a parcel of land on Prospect Street if you're approached. We could have two to 250 people here, but instead we've elected to have three to make this request of you. <clears throat> We're in the process of fighting for our neighborhood and our town, and I don't live anywhere near where this development's going to go, and I could avoid it, but this issue is important to me. Um, we've asked the council over the last six months, and this issue's been going on for some time, and you've been approached by the investor um, who thinks he's um, going to get this developed, but we've asked our council to vote no no on AR1 to put 53 homes, 53 apartments on two acres, <clears throat> something that he can only do if you sell him a parcel of land if this ordinance goes through. <clears throat> you went through a similar issue um, up by the old um, car dealership and with the, uh, with the parking issue. So you've been there and you know what high density is. Maybe some of you got elected on that issue. Uh, maybe some lost on that issue. Um, I've lived with high-density housing issues for years, and I've seen the negative effects it can have on a town. 
causing urbanization and the removal of the small town community feel. In fact, I lived through um, high density housing since 1986. Um, I grew up in Moorestown, New I grew up in Moorestown, New Jersey, <clears throat> where my dad was, like you, a council person and a mayor. Not the Moorestown in Morris County, but the Mo Moorestown in Burlington County, the same Moorestown that battles the Ridgewood women's lacrosse team year after year in the state tournament of champions. <laughs> <clears throat> my dad fought off Toll Brothers for years, but over time one project passed, and once one project passed, it opened the floodgates for others. And the sprawl in Moorestown is unbelievable that's happened over the last several years. So I stand before you and ask if you're approached by this investor that you say no if he asks you to sell him that tiny sliver of land. Please be good neighbors to Glenrock, the same good neighbors that you've been for so many years. We don't want the traffic to crowd our streets. We don't want the parking to be untenable. We want our little borough to stay the same as it's been for the last many, many years. I thank you for your consideration, and while I hope this never comes to this borough, I mean to this town for a vote, if it does, I hope you'll vote no and take in consideration all the residents of Glen Rock. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hello. Hi. I'm going to do this. This is part of my speech. Um, my name is Siobhan Cran Winograd, and I live at 274 Ivy Place. So, congratulations. This is the first time I'm talking to all five of you. Um, I'm going to go a little bit in a different direction. So I have three points tonight, and they're not all related, but they're somewhat tied together. And at the end, I want to make sure, because I forget things, because I get nervous up here, that we go back to point one. Um, I've been coming to village council meetings since the mid-'80s when I was a student rep at Ridgewood High School. And every single time I stand up here to make a public comment, I basically want to throw up. And I'm here to talk to you tonight about some things I've noticed with the public comment and toss some ideas out. I'm not looking to limit anyone's free speech. I'm not looking to change anyone's expression, alter any words that come out of anyone's mouth. But over the past year, the public comment section has gotten a little crazy, in my opinion. These are all just my opinions. And with that, you know, I've looked at other municipalities, and I think there's some room for improvement. And by room for improvement, I mean I think that we should begin to discuss the idea of shortening each person's time. That's one idea. Um, I randomly called around and looked on the web. Um, we're the longest time within Bergen County per person. We also have two public speaking sections. And the reason why I want to do this is, um, well, let me say, the second point is, I think we need to put some of the children that come here first because the meetings have gotten contentious. And you know, the first time I, got, I came to speak at a public meeting, I was told my strategy sit on the aisle, get up, jump up, knock people down. Like it was a little crazy. And I think when the children come in, we might want to explore the idea of putting the kids first, you know, when they come in here to talk about their events. Um, I also am a little concerned that some of our employees are lingering here for long periods of time through the public comment. And it's not like really ideal for anybody because they're tired. So the other idea is that it gets stressful and there's no clock, you know, there's no place to look, you're already panicking, that's what I did, I sent my clock. So with all these ideas, I had a whole bunch of them. Last week, Sarab talked about talking about uh, frequently asked questions. I really think that if we looked at the public comment section, decided to reduce or not reduce, just an idea, say kids go first or they don't, um, we should begin to electronically enter comments by mail. And the reason why is because a lot of my friends are interested in what's going on, but they can't be here. So with that, you know, I'm willing to work with every anybody on any of this to give you a work product, to write an ordinance, to toss it up there so you guys can rip it apart, eat it alive, I don't care. But I feel very strongly, just me, that the public comment section could be improved. And again, not limiting free speech, but maybe reducing the time, coming up with an order where the kids are go first. You know, maybe if an employee needs to be here, they can leave and they can go home and get some good rest and come to work. That's my first point. Um, my second point is just, Jeff, I just wanted to let you know, not in a critical way, not mean way, I didn't really care for the committee idea. And I have many reasons why. Um, but I feel like it's a very slippery slope, extremely expensive, and it replicates things we have in place. And 
if there are legal acts and there are things that are occurring, I feel that there's processes already in place for which our tax dollars pay, and we should really look at those first. I don't know if you have, but I just wanted to offer you my opinion on that. Um, the other thing is that, you know, I sit through the budgeting meetings and I understand that litigation falls outside of this. All of this would be outside of it. And as I sit here and I truly listen, because I'm really trying to be open-minded and listen, if we spend the money on that, there's things that we can't spend money on. And the number one thing I keep hearing people say is we want a master plan. We want a master plan. You know, I would like us to sort of acknowledge that if we do one, something else is going to give because we're not really able to do it all. Um, I did because I was a little negative there. I want to tell you I love your commitment to parking. Really appreciate you keeping on the agenda. And my last thing, which now I know I have one minute left, is um, Roberta. I want to take my time in front of everybody because my public comments aren't enter entered by email and let you know what a great job I think you've done. Um, last week I was a little shocked, not looking to inject myself in anyone's battle, but when people said that you should be dismissed, I was really quite sad, a little bit surprised from my own vantage point. Um, I really tried to list out what you do and how you do, but my kids have been around and they were offering things like, oh, she's so nice, and that's not really what I wanted to say. I couldn't really come up with a comprehensive list, so I went with one thing. Um, the one thing that I've enjoyed since you took this office, and I've been involved with multiple village managers, is that everything that you've done, you've made better. That doesn't mean it's perfect. It doesn't mean it's ideal. I'm a big betterment girl. I think during the campaign, that's the word that I used a lot. I'm very into betterment. And that doesn't mean that we're ideal, because you get better, and the next day you get a little bit better. And I feel that Roberta has done that. And that we have a lot further to go, so I don't want anyone to think like, oh, it's the best. But um, with that, you've also taken that betterment approach and you've translated it to all your employees. And that I like that because they admire you. And I just really wanted to say that in front of all you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, wait. You're supposed to go back to point number one and let me know uh, if you have any wait. thoughts. I'm sorry? Thoughts on number one. I okay. wrote that down. All right. I'll just give you a, a quick, okay. a very quick. It's almost serendipitous that you bring this up because I had just recently looked at whether or not we could shorten everyone's time to three minute but extend it to 40 minutes which would allow us to hear from more people for a little bit less time and kind of cut to the chase and also I do agree that a visual timer allows you to see um, how much time you have left so I think that there are great ideas I think it's something we've kind of played with and likely I maybe something we'll be implementing but thank you okay and if you need any help okay I, know. I like your idea on the okay. putting the answers to the questions I think that's a great idea and, and, and maybe we can figure out a way to do that yeah, with talking with Sarab and, and getting that put together so we can uh, get some of these answers out that people are concerned about so I love it I, I mean I'd work yeah. with Sarab if he'd work with me thank you hello good evening good evening my name's Walter Tours. 17 Richmond Avenue in Ridgewood. And I've lived there for almost 50 years. And <clears throat> picking up on some of the comments that have been made here, it was a nice script, but I'd like to add that I'm opposed to any apartment developments whatsoever that will change the character of the town. It hasn't changed in the 50 years that I've been here, and that, that's what I like about the town, and I would not like to see apartments pop up all over the place and the overpopulation. It's been difficult uh, over the years, uh, with increased difficulty, to get from, I'm on the west side of town, but to, on a Saturday to get through town, doing that snake dance past Whole Foods and through the underpass and everywhere, it became very unplayable uh, in my efforts to get to my garden plot, which I had down by the stable. I had one there for a couple of years, but uh, it became such a drag to get there that I gave it up for a while. But then uh, this year, I happened to see in the paper that there were garden plots available, and uh, some new ones were going to open up over at uh, Habernickel, and I thought, gee, that's on my side of town. I don't have to go through that horrible traffic, and I've never seen the place. I've read about it in the paper. I've been here for 50 years. I never even knew people had a place big enough to have horses in town. Uh, so it was all a surprise to me, so I went to check it out. 
And uh, lo and behold, it turned out to be a blessing to me in many ways. Uh, the garden plot, I got a garden plot there. They opened up three of them, and I was fortunate enough to get one. And uh, it's so convenient. I, uh, I have leg problems now, so I would never be able to get down to stable plots anymore because the, the geography of it and topography, whatever. But uh, oh, and while I was down there, in the years that I was down at the, the other location, uh, there was one year we had a severe drought and I had to uh, carry five gallon buckets of water up from the stream to water my garden because right. there was no watering at all. <coughs> and then another year there was a terrible flood where my garden got under a couple of feet of water. So uh, anyhow, that was part of my experience in gardening. I never had much success. But now up at this new location, I've had success like I've never had before. I've got vegetables growing that uh, it's beautiful. My whole garden is thriving. And uh, I'm so glad that you made it available. And I want to thank everybody for that. And uh, uh, there are added bonuses to being up there. The location is so nice. I had never seen it before. And uh, I can park within 30, 40 feet of the gate. And there's like handicap, you know, the sidewalks cut down. So I can shuffle up without having to get my feet up on the curbs and shuffle into my garden and then spend the morning having a lot of fun uh, poking around and uh, pruning and whatnot. And there's an added bonus in that it's so delightful in the morning to be working in my garden and hear these puppy little effervescent voices coming, or these children coming through. And uh, invariably, one of them will stop and look, and uh, I'll look at them, and they'll keep busy. And uh, so I ask them maybe sometimes if they have a question, and they, they do have a question, that's why they're standing there. And it's such a pleasure to interact with them. They're so, they're so absorbent to whatever you give them and appreciative. And it's just a delight, it's an added bonus. So uh, uh, I had more. Let me check what I have here. Uh, okay, this is just fillings where I, ha I never had success at home trying to grow in my valuable little plot on Richmond Avenue. Uh, the good soil, there was much to be desired and never had success between that and the rabbits and the, and the chipmunks. Uh, so yeah, my, I went into container gardening and that, that, that was a nightmare. Didn't succeed with that, so then I was glad I was able to get back into the earth again at, uh, at uh, Habernickel. Right. And I, I want to let you know I appreciate it, and I hope to be able to do it again next year. Yeah. So we're glad to have you back. And actually, I think I saw the video, and your garden looks great. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. So we're all good. <laughs> that was Green just, thumbs, just very good. Day, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> congratulations, and good luck with that. Yeah, I, I was in a different outfit then. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. <laughs> you still recognize me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This will be the last speaker. Okay. Great. Welcome. Ann Levin, 342 South Irving Street. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for uh, approving those minutes so promptly. I mean, I remember uh, recently we approved minutes from like a year and a half or some like massive number. It's much appreciated because a lot of people do like to look at the minutes in a timely manner. Um, regarding the bills, claims, and vouchers uh, discussion that occurred, <coughs> Um, I think it's great that the videographer got paid. Obviously, we're not going to not pay somebody that we owe. But I was wondering, um, since clearly neither of the two c continuing council members even knew about the video, uh, hopefully you can find out who approved it. I know we've all seen on social media the contract that indicated that former Councilwoman Halk was a contact person. I don't know if... Uh, how exactly she was involved with it, but I'd like to suggest that maybe you could contact or consult with legal counsel to find out if um, perhaps some of those who starred in that video, which somebody up there just described as a propaganda video, um, they could be billed, perhaps uh, former Mayor Aronson, um, the current village manager, 
Uh, as a couple people said, there's both legal and ethical questions about it, and I don't think we should have to pay for it. I'm glad you paid it, but I don't think we should have to pay for it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, is that our 30 minutes? Or uh, we, we still have about five minutes. Okay, so short. we have a few more minutes, so come on up. Welcome. Nice. Hello, Marsha Ringel, 250 Ferris Place. Uh, I can think of something that you could do fairly easily that everybody in town would appreciate on every side of every issue, which is to investigate the acoustics of this room. <laughs> okay, I'm not getting any younger, and so I attributed it to aging, okay? That what I hear a lot of the time, sitting behind the person talking, so you can't see their mouth, can't see their face, this is what I hear. And the most important thing is, mm, but what I really want to tell you is, mm, I'm actually gonna have to go home and watch this video to hear what most of the people in front of me said. Well, you have applause. Okay, I stopped attributing it to my old age when I went to a high density housing hearing at the high school. The high school room is much bigger than this. There's a little balcony in the back. I was sitting really far from where the person was speaking. I heard every word. I heard every word that every person who came up to the microphone said. I heard every word that everybody on the day has said. And I said, it's not me, it's it. Now I know that acoustics is a very difficult thing. Alice Tully Hall is still working on it. Millions of dollars later, they don't know what they're doing. But <laughs> there are people out there who know what they are doing. It's not hearing it, it's not like you don't hear it, you don't comprehend it, you don't understand it. And if you can't see the person speaking, you lose a lot. Now, four years ago, I had suggested that this lectern be moved to the side, either side, and it was done. Mr. Pucciarelli took credit for it, but I had suggested it to him. <laughs> Mr. Aronson praised him for having such great ideas, and it worked great, <coughs> because the person standing here was speaking to both the dais and the audience, which is usually the case. And the camera showed the person's face, not a profile. And the people watching didn't have to look at the back of the person standing here, which for women in particular is not comfortable. It's just not something that people ever say, but it's true. Why can't we try to investigate this? I don't know whether it's the carpeting or that it's bouncing off the ceiling, maybe without spending a million dollars. Something could be done so that all the millions of words exchanged in here could be understood and heard more easily. Okay, that's my first suggestion. The other one's much shorter. The fact that there's an arts council is, is what's make, inspiring me to have a solution to this. These are the two ugliest landscapes ever put in any public building. Not that I've been in every public building, but I've been in a number of them, and they are absolutely hideous. Could the Arts Council or somebody have some kind of rotation? They should be the same size and shape. They shouldn't be so distracting that nobody looks at the council. But you're not looking at this. We are. It's really depressing, okay? These gray mountains and rain, whatever. So it's just a thought. Maybe there are people who work at the art barn, you know, who would love to have their painting up or something, and they could get credit or could be in the paper or something like that. And it just would be a lot more interesting because this is a very boring room, okay. except for what happens when you can hear it. So would you please <laughs> consider moving this lectern, getting it out of the way because it's also an, an interference to the eye line. Not everybody's really tall, okay? Me in particular, or included. And sometimes I literally can't even see the council members' faces because the person standing here is blocking it. So you come here, you know, and, and you try to really participate, and it's just hard. Okay, so I know you have four weeks before the next meeting. Maybe something could be discussed, you know, a little money put aside or something, and some expert getting better microphones or whatever. Okay. That's my suggestion. Appreciate it. Thank you. Our time. That's 30 minutes. Okay. All right. Um, okay. We'll just... Is it is it short? Is it, I mean, okay. All right. You know what? Just let. Can we just do it at the end? Is that okay? Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Moving on. Thank you. Uh, manager's report. Roberta. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. 
Okay, I have a couple of items to uh, uh, provide updates with. First, on the um, 2015 uh, Shedler grant, I just wanted to provide an update. Um, at the mayor's request and council's request, um, this evening we've provided a uh, packet of information relative to the grant process for the Shedler 2015 grant. Uh, information that's included is from the October and November meetings, including the updated and complete grant application, as well as the provision of information related to Bergen County responses that indicated that they did not have jurisdiction over the municipality. So that's in your, uh, in your packets to take and do with what you deem necessary. Yeah, and so we appreciate that you have all that information, appreciate the time spent and the staff time spent preparing it, so it just helps us move everything along much more quickly. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just a uh, short update on detours. Uh, we still have them um, on Glen. I think they started doing work uh, earlier this week on the east side, as we said, East Glen. There was some work also being done on West Glen. We are trying our hardest uh, to, to lessen the impact. Uh, we try to do individual things like that email that you sent to me. I wanted to ask the update um, on that, right? Yeah, Jack and I discussed that, the chief and I discussed that, and sometimes it's doable, sometimes it's not. We do try. Um, and <clears throat> I guess at the next meeting we'll give more of an update of what's going on for the next couple of months, but I anticipate that the detours will be lesser, um, but there still may be work going on in Glen uh, as PSE and G comes back and redoes some piping and stuff, so. When are they gonna repave the road anyway? It's just completely, I mean, it's a complete mess right now. Do you have any ETA on that? No. No? Could we find that out? I mean, it, it's. Repave, you mean the, where the plates are? Yeah, but the whole thing just, because it, it's I know, cause really. Do you, have, do you have an update on that? Because I, I don't. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Council. Uh, what was the question, Council? So, so the question was, I mean, it's kind of a mess right now to drive down, and I was just wondering when they might repave it so that it actually is drivable. Um, God, I wish I had that answer, but I don't. But the answer I do have is PSC and G still has not gotten their permits to go under the trestle bridge. I got that confirmed this evening from New Jersey Transit. Um, it appears that PSC and G is managing this project with a bunch of kindergartners. That's the nicest and most charitable term I can use. Um, Chris, transit is gonna expedite the permit, yeah. but that's why we have two big plates on either side of the trestle right now. Yeah, I mean, anyway, you might be able to just talk with them and ask them when they might be able to get all this done and, um, and, and I did send. I did send a very nasty email to my PSE and G contacts at about quarter to eight. I haven't gotten a reply from them. Okay. Yeah, because it looks like the delays are gonna go on longer than we anticipated and certainly longer than Roberta would have hoped for. Yeah. yeah. If, they can't, if they can't pull the permits from the appropriate agency in time, yeah. and I made a comment on this back on July 6th, and so they still haven't gotten permits. Sorry, Chris. Chris and I talked about bringing PSE&G in with their customer service person uh, and meeting with them in the next couple of weeks to really go through all items. Yeah. If one of the council would like to attend that meeting, that's fine. Uh, but we will work on that, okay? Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. Thanks, Chris. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, Graydon Pool was inspected yesterday by the New Jersey Department of Health and determined to be in compliance with regulations. The inspection confirmed it as a bathing beach. Uh, Valley Hospital completed their paving project and has removed temporary signs. Um, we have begun, really, Janet. Janet is the calendar. Uh, we have begun <laughs> working on the 2017 calendar. Um, the theme that we're pursuing is Ridgewood Delivers. Um, it will be um, uh, village services that Ridgewood delivers, things like what Signal does, health, birth certificates, engineering, finance. We're looking to get <coughs> pictures. Um, Janet also has to, is starting to get sponsorships for the calendar. And I just want to add, similar to our LEAF committee, where we have residents uh, talk to us and look at the communications and stuff. I talked about that earlier. We'd like to reach out to residents to also help on the calendar uh, to the in the event. That it's a pretty complicated calendar. I mean, I, th I think we finally got certain holidays right. Um, we try to. It's always right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, so how should somebody get in touch? Because 
every year uh, we have people that look at the calendar and critique it after the fact. So yeah. I just wonder how should they, who should they communicate with? Should they, they email directly? Could you send to, to me and okay. Janet or just me? That's okay, fine. Great. But we'd love to have some help on that. Um, just an FYI, uh, normally we uh, go after community development block grants every year. Um, these are federal fund grants that are available to support projects that provide accessibility for all. Uh, in the past, we've gotten grants for curb cuts, many of the ramps, some automated uh, door openers, as well as years ago the elevator in Village Hall. The funds available, as is true, I think, with every grant we're looking at, um, decrease every year. This funding does not require matching funds, which is really nifty. Um, you know, you just get the whole funding. Mm -hmm. So um, we have been uh, brainstorming. Janet, particularly with Chris, have been trying to come up with creative ideas. Um, and we're coming up a little short this year. Um, Janet will be bringing this opportunity to the access, to your access meeting uh, on August 18th, looking for other suggestions uh, to see if we can't uh, find something that would make sense for the village uh, in this particular grant area. So it will be an access discussion item. Okay, great. Just wanted to update. I, a very, very short update on Habernickel. Um, we have, um, um, the lights have been turned on uh, in the, in the uh, parking area. Um, those lights were not at all associated with Health Born. Health Born. They were associated with the 2010 plan. Uh, and they were meant to be for security and safety reasons. Uh, what we've done, I, I was there last night at about a quarter to nine. I know some other people have visited. Um, we've adjusted the intensity of the lights um, by reducing the number of the boxes that have lights from four to two. Um, and uh, we've eliminated the light on the back of the stable uh, as well. Uh, we're going to watch that. We're going to watch what happens with deleafing. But also, I think um, we're planning, or it's being planned, that at the first work session in September, there'll be a discussion on uh, Habernickel that I've been particularly speaking to Jeff about. And that, as well as the hypothetical you know, 95 number of children uh, that can be there, will also be a discussion item to hear what the residents have to say. Uh, Health Barn will be there as well. So I don't know if anybody wants to add. Um, so when, when you say, Roberta, safety uh, for the lights, just, uh, help me explain a little bit more what, what, what that means exactly. Yeah, uh, you know, there have been uh, incidents in the past, and we have evidence of incidents of, um, <coughs> of, of people entering the park late at night, um, broken bottles. Um, it is kind of a rule around here, I think, particularly in the August and, and July months when kids are out of school. Um, they tend to navigate towards places that are darker. Um, so the lights are really a deterrent uh, in certain ways. Um, they help us with our videos. Um, the security camera, uh, we've watched some stuff on, I, I don't want to go into detail on this, but we have picked up stuff on the video cameras. The video camera right now is not, the security camera is not hooked in <coughs> to the police desk. Once it is hooked into the police desk, we'll have a really big benefit in the sense that if we see stuff happening, the police can immediately go out and address the situation. So, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, response to residents: Meet the manager again from uh, August uh, standpoint. We're in the summer months. Uh, this Monday, this coming Monday, 5:30, 7:30, manager's office here in Village Hall. Um, we talked a little bit about this earlier in the day, but the uh, Wall Street Journal ran an article today on new bail rules in New Jersey. Now, we've had this uh, discussion a couple of times in a couple of different forums during the budget process, et cetera. Um, the lead uh, line in that story was, a sweeping overhaul of New Jersey's bail system aimed at unclogging county jails and courts is spreading fiscal angst across the state. Many county executives say they're struggling to comply. Uh, it amounts to, an un and we talked about this, it's an unfunded mandate, and it may require cutting services or raising taxes. Uh, the estimate in the Wall Street Journal was the counties alone uh, would spend somewhere around $45 million uh, because of this bail reform uh, next year. Um, the chief and myself are going uh, to a session uh, on September 22nd, a county session, to discuss the new law and its implementation, and we'll be back with some commentary on that. So, uh, as far as um, 
events. Ridgewood Guild presents art and live music at Art in the Park on Fridays, 6.30 to 9, on the sidewalk in front of Memorial Park at Van Nest. Artwork is for sale. 20% of the proceeds benefit the Guild. Uh, popular Farmer's Market at the train station, open every Sunday, 9 to 3. Um, tonight, uh, in 10 minutes, I think, the Ridgewood Guild movie, um, Despicable Me, uh, is airing. And late breaking news, um, also known as I forgot to list it on my report until just before this meeting, is that we did um, submit a declaration of intent to apply for a matching grant of $59,200 uh, from Memorial Park at Van Nest. Um, the public meeting on this grant will be held on September 14th. The total grant application is due on October 13th. The grant application will be available somewhere in that time period for the review by council and public, and also obviously at the public meeting. Um, so, so that um, what the grant itself? Could you help understand what? Help me understand what the uh, the monies would be used for? Sure. So we estimated. This is an estimate again. This is early in the grant process, uh, and again, as we get closer to the public meeting on September 14th, we'll have more details around this. But it is uh, a total cost of 118,400, which means the match would be 59,200. Um, this is the revitalization of uh, Memorial Park. Remove brick pavers, replace them with decorative concrete sidewalk, remove aerial electric and install underground electric to existing fixtures, convert existing spotlights to LED, installation of black aluminum decorative fencing. We talked at the last meeting about would we do it around the park or just on that area that seems a little uh, dangerous. Acid wash the war memorial, installation of some barriers, um, potentially look at interactive musical artwork. Um, what I said last time is the nice thing about this grant is it, we're asking the county for a lot of money. They only have a limited uh, funding. I think it's about, if I recall correctly, 217000 This is kind of a scalable, it's a scalable grant. So to the extent that uh, we get less, we could eliminate some of these items. And between now and the uh, public meeting, we could you know, flesh this out a little more thoroughly. So. Okay, yeah, and that's it. Okay, great, thank you. Moving on to council reports, we'll start with uh, Councilman Voigt. Um, Mayor Newsom, I have nothing to report. Okay, <laughs> um, Deputy Mayor Seaton. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just very briefly, I've met today with um, Dr. Dan Fishbein, Superintendent of Schools, and um, Timothy Cronin, Director of Parks and Recreation, and I believe their business administrator. And we were discussing the issue of shade trees. So um, we're kind of in the infancy of this, but um, we're going to uh, partner with them. We're possibly going to partner with the schools in uh, one way or the other with either an educational component or maybe a shared service to um, pull our resources and buy trees as we need them each year. And um, we're just going to, very basic discussion we had today. Uh, Tim and I will bring this back to the uh, full shade tree commission. And um, Dr. Fishbein said he would contact the principals of the schools to see how all this would work out and gauge their interests. So um, hopefully more to come on that. And that is my report. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Councilman Walsh? I don't have anything to report. It's a slow month. <laughs> Councilman Hashag? Uh, just very quickly, the uh, CBD advisory committee applications deadline was uh, August 5th. Uh, great list of applicants. We're very, very pleased with the, um, with the turnout. Uh, we will be notifying folks, uh, the applicants, when the interviews will take place, most likely, I think, uh, week of August 22nd. I haven't heard back from enough people, so possibly not until September. <coughs> and that's it. We'll see. Thank you. Okay. Great. And I only have um, two things, The actually three things. The Stroke Preservation Commission meeting tomorrow evening has been canceled. Uh, no applications to hear. Planning Board will be meeting Tuesday, August 16th at 7.30 p.m. right here in this room. And as uh, our village manager indicated earlier, Access will be meeting downstairs in the community center August 18th, which I believe is a Thursday? I think it's a Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, it is yeah. a Thursday, yes. Okay, great. So mark your calendars and hope to see <coughs> everyone there. Oh, and one more thing, that the um, Planning Board will not be hearing the first site plan application on multifamily uh, high density housing on the 16th. Uh, it will be postponed until I believe it's the 5th of September. So we're good. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And moving on from there, uh, 
ordinances for Ridgewood Water. We have none. We'll be moving on to um, resolu resolutions for Ridgewood Water. Okay, the following resolutions numbered 16 233 through 16 239 will be adopted by a consent agenda with one vote by the Village Council. It will be read by title only. Authorized compensation for participants in lead and copper sampling and testing program. Amend agreement for online credit card and bank account debit payment of water bills. Elimination of convenience fee for customers. Authorized change order, cold water meters and supplies. <coughs> or contract under state contract, chlorine analyzers and supplies. Or professional services contract, hydrogeologic consulting for capital improvement program. Title 59 approval, servicing and repair of electric source. Award contract, servicing and repair of electric source. May I have a motion? I move. Second. Ashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voight? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So moving on to the regular portion of our meeting. Uh, we'll start with an introduction to Ordinance 3542. I move the first reading of Ordinance 3542. I second. Ashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voight? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So awarded, will the clerk please read Ordinance 3542 by title? An ordinance to amend Chapter 265 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood Vehicles and Traffic at Section 265-47, Violations and Penalties. I move that Ordinance 3542 be adopted on first reading and that September 14th, 2016 be fixed as the date for the hearing thereon. I second the motion. Hashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voight? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Our next introduction on 3543, I move the first reading of Ordinance 3543. I second. Hashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voight? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So awarded, will the clerk please read Ordinance 3543 by title? An ordinance to amend Chapter 265 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood, Vehicles and Traffic, at Section 265-18, Regulations Not Exclusive. I second the motion. No, I need to oh, sorry. I, 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 I move that Ordinance 3544 <laughs> be adopted on first reading. ahead of the game. Sorry. September 14, 2016, be fixed as a date for the hearing there. I'll second. Okay. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Roy? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? <laughs> yes. Oops. Happens. Okay, great. Uh, next, 3544. I move the first reading of Ordinance 3544. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Roy? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So, awarded, will the clerk please read Ordinance 3544 by title? An ordinance to amend Chapter 265 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood, Vehicles and Traffic, at Section 265-29, Parking Meter Zones Designated, and at Section 265-69, Schedule 19, Time Limit Parking, and at Section 265-72, Schedule 22, Loading Zones. Okay. I need a motion. I move that Ordinance 3544 be adopted on first reading and that September 14, 2016 be fixed as the date for the hearing thereon. I'll second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Roy? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Okay, the next is an introduction, 3545. I move the first reading of Ordinance 3545. I have a second. Second. S Hache. Yes. Seaton. Yes. Roy. Yes. Walsh. Yes. And Newton. Yes. So awarded, will the clerk please read Ordinance 3545 by title? An ordinance to amend Chapter 249 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood Streets and Sidewalks at Section 249-44, General Considerations. I move that Ordinance 3545 be adopted on first reading and that September 14th, 2016 be fixed as the date for the hearing thereon. I second the motion. Hache. Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voight? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Introduction of 3546. I move the first reading of Ordinance 3546. Second. So, okay. uh, Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voight? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So, awarded, will the clerk please read Ordinance 3546 by title? An ordinance to amend Chapter 145 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood Fees at Section 145 6 
enumeration of fees relating to code chapters. You need a motion? Oh, um. I move that ordinance 3546 be adopted on first reading and that September 14th, 2016 be fixed as the date for the hearing thereon. I second the motion. Ashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Wright? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the first reading of ordinance 3547. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Wright? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So what will the clerk please read ordinance 3547 by title? An ordinance to amend chapter 105 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood entitled Animals to create a new section to regulate, ban the sale of dog and cat mill animals in pet shops. I move that ordinance 3547 be adopted on first reading and on September 14, 2016 be fixed as the date for, uh, for the hearing thereon. Second. Ashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voigt? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Okay. Moving on to our public hearings. Um, we'll have two public hearings tonight and both will be actually um, continued we, as before we move on to September 7th, right? So once we open, okay, great. Okay, first public hearing is uh, to 3540. I move the clerk read ordinance 3540 by title on second reading that the public hearing thereon be opened. Second. Ashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voight? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Will the clerk please read title of ordinance 3540? An ordinance to amend chapter 190, section 122 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood entitled Signs. The Planning Board has not yet been able to review Ordinance 3540, so the public hearing will be continued to September 7, 2016 public meeting. The public hearing on this ordinance will be held this evening due to the fact that it was previously published as being held tonight. The public hearing is now open. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Boyd Loving, 342 South Irving Street. I have one question about this ordinance, and I see that the time uh, has been doubled in terms of the amount of time that you can leave a sign up post election. It had been 10 days and this ordinance is proposing that it go to 20 days and I'm wondering why that's being done. Actually, I don't believe the ordinance says 20 days. I mean 10 days. I think it says 20. We didn't make any changes with regard to the time period. Right. <coughs> um, but let me just check. I can check the ordinance. On the handout, it says to be deleted no later than 10 days on page 2 and the amend on page one says 20 days. Oh, that's right, yeah. No, you're right. Um, I think the time period was that there was, uh, there was a new case that, was, that came out that I think I shared with, um, uh, I think it was a Riggs case or a, another case from the Supreme Court that dealt with restrictions as to time limitations with regard to signs, political signs. And they found there was a, it was one that found that either seven or 10 days was a more restricted time period and was something that they wanted to consider to uh, extend a little bit more than what it was. So that's why I think that happened here. That's why we did it. Hmm. Uh, my personal opinion is that's going backwards. Uh, I realize that may be done for legal purposes, but to have signs up for 20 days after an election just seems to... Or they don't have to be up for 20. It just, well, that's it, the outside they, time they are, they are permitted yeah. to be up, so you know it's going to happen. Some people are going to leave them up until the last minute. Um, I, I just question the need to have to double the amount of time. I was just wondering if that could be checked somehow to verify before you pass this whether that has to be done. In particular, in a residential neighborhood, uh, okay, that's... Maybe we can live with it, but if you have people who've put up large signs in the CBD, as would happen in a previous election, to have these billboard type signs be up in, in store windows for 20 days after an election just seems, it doesn't serve any purpose whatsoever. And I, I think the, I mean, I can share, certainly share the case with you so you can look at what the reasoning is. And then it's just a restriction that has no, seemed to have no basis in the, what the court perceived was reasonable law and, um, health and, and uh, public safety issues. So I think that they have, you know, the Supreme Court has shown and the courts have shown that they have significant issues with limitations with regard to putting out and leaving up signs. 
So uh, I can share the case with if you want to read it. Uh, all right, again, um, my opinion is that I thought we were trying to move forward, not backward. Well, I'm already seeing election signs up. I've seen them up since June. <laughs> now we're going to have to put up with them almost until the month of December. And I can tell you this, that our, our sign ordinance, particularly as it applies to political signs and other types of signs, needs a major overhaul. What the effort here was, was to get something done quickly, particularly keeping political signs and other temporary signs because you can't necessarily restrict or regulate based on content. But you know, the idea here was to make sure that none of them would be allowed, no temporary signs, including <coughs> political signs, would be allowed on any public mm -hmm. property. And that was really the whole purpose of this, was the, to get it done for this coming election, because I think that's what everybody was concerned about after what happened through the spring and last fall. And um, we need a major overhaul on it anyway. So this was just, you know, the first quick action that we could take without having to really revisit it and check it with all zones. And, and I appreciate those efforts. I, I, I did see that in here. Again, my concern is that we seem to be taking a, a big step backward mm -hmm. in terms of the amount of time these signs are going to be up. And uh, I, I don't need to see the case law on that. I appreciate you telling me about it. But I do think you should forward it to the council so a decision could be made whether this is something that you have to do or it would be nice to do. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Name and address, Marsha Ringel, 250 Ferris Place. I had noticed the same thing that that boy did, and I, I thought it was a typo. So if it's not a typo, I would go from 10 to like 1, not 10 to 20. Um, <laughs> even if there's some town where, you know, it became a precedent that they did 20, I don't think we need to do that just because somebody else did it. And it's hard to imagine anybody suing the town because after they won or lost, they had to take the sign down. When the election's over, it's over, and I think everybody's usually more than sick of it by then. So um, I would agree with that suggestion that we not go to 20, but maybe to you know 10 minutes or something along those lines. I'm sure everybody would like to do that. Unfortunately, yeah. the, courts, the courts don't let you do it. It wasn't but, another but town. I, I don't understand important. the advantage to anybody of having the sign up after the election is over. It's a free speech issue. That's the only thing. Free speech. Marsha, your time's getting why. shorter and shorter and shorter. It's going from one hour to 10 minutes. It <laughs> right. I would be okay with that. 12 minutes. No, really, I think that where the signs can go should be as limited as possible within the law. Um, I don't see why any signs for um, a political campaign of any kind should be allowed on village property. I consider every inch of village property to belong to everyone in the village. And um, I find it distracting when driving. I find it sometimes offensive. I don't want to see a million signs that are the same. Um, making fun of this, some high school kid had a prank um, where after the election, they took some signs and like put a hundred of them on somebody's lawn. You know, sort of the old flamingo trick. Um, and I liked that. I thought that made a point that, yeah, we've, we've got enough. So. I would, I would hope, I would, you know, I would urge that the council limit it to the greatest possible extent within any reasonable law and not go backwards on that. That's yeah. what we're trying to do. So we appreciate that. So if we can just get copies of the case sure. law and then we I'll, can look I'll be at able it. To show you that. And as um, Matt indicated, we have a, an entire overhaul of this coming up. We have to us. work on it. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to be working on it anyway. So that's great. Uh, so with that, I move the public hearing be continued to September 7th, 2016. I second the motion. Ashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. White? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the clerk read ordinance 3541 by title on second reading and that the public hearing thereon be opened. I second. Uh, Ashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. White? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Will the clerk please read the title of Ordinance 3541? An ordinance of the Village of Ridgewood amending Chapter 145Bs and Chapter 190, Section 143 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood entitled Land Use and Development by Repealing Ordinance Number 3066. Okay, great. Ordinance 3541 will be amended to indicate that it is amending Chapter 190, Section 
143 and section 144 of the sections of chapter 190 which are included in ordinance 3066. It will be amended in the title of this ordinance as well as in the second paragraph. This is not a substantive change, so the public hearing and consideration for adoption for this ordinance will take place this evening. At this time, I will entertain a motion to amend Ordinance 3541. I move that Ordinance 3541 be amended to indicate in both the title and in the second paragraph that Chapter 190, Section 4, 143, and Section 144 are being amended. I second the motion. Okay. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Boyd? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. The Planning Board has not yet been able to review Ordinance 3541, so the public hearing will be continued to September 7th, 2016 public meeting. The public hearing on this ordinance will be held this evening due to the fact that it was previously advertised as being held tonight. The public hearing is now open. No comments? Okay. Hauk, 217 Fairmount Road. Um, so what just happened, you, you, instead of uh, passing it, you didn't, did you, you voted on it and it passed. No. They voted to amend it, just to amend it. And mm -hmm. so then it's, this is not a fait accompli, it's being carried to September 7th or 27th. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Anyone else? Great. I move the public hearing be continued to September 7th, 2016. I second the motion. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Roy? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. And with that, we'll move on to resolutions. The following resolutions, number 16-240 through 16-251, will be adopted by a consent agenda. With one vote by the village councils, they will be read by title only. Award contract under state contract, Ford F-350 pickup, Parks Department, award contract, recycling of vegetative waste, award contract, recycling of ve vegetative waste, award contract under Houston Galveston Area Council Cooperative Purchasing Program, Pierce Saber Pumper Fire Engine, award contract, continuity of operations, continuity of government plan, uh, reject bids, operation of the Lakeview Compost Facility, amendment to Central Business District Advisory Committee. Uh, resolution terms of members. Authorized tax lien premium for block 3304, lot six, to be given to village treasurer. Renew membership in the Bergen County Municipal Joint Insurance Fund. Authorized Richard Wildscape Association to fund treatment of invasive species vegetation growth control program at Kings Palm Park. Declare property surplus street sweepers. Support S2254 and A3821, a firm legislative intent of the Fair Housing Act. May I have a motion? So moved. I second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Wright? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. And with that, we'll go right back to public comment. Once again, not to exceed five minutes per person. Hi, Lorraine Reynolds, 550 Windermere Avenue. I'll, I'll first by saying I agree with Marsha. I don't really like the camera on my back. I'd much prefer to be over there. Um, okay, I was just gonna wing it, but now I had time to write it. Um, I don't know about any of you, but I'm very careful when I spend my money. And I just wanted to say that spending $295,000 tax, of taxpayer dollars on nine construction documents for a garage design that had not been voted on is completely unacceptable. This action would have never gone unanswered in the real world. I cannot forgive this waste of my taxpayer dollars and neither should any of the council members. I really can't get past that. It's $300,000. I know that some of the money wasn't wasted because it was used on another, you know, design, but ordering and spending almost $300,000 on something that had never been voted on is completely unacceptable and should not be unanswered. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Jacqueline Hone, 30 Carriage Lane. 
I agree with 100% with Lorraine Reynolds. There's a difference between an ethical responsibility and a fiduciary obligation to act and report against wrongdoing. Not answering complaints or bringing forward no known information is willfully concealing. It makes you no different than the person who actually committed the wrong. Public comments are going on forever. And they're going on forever because nothing is ever answered, complaints are never addressed, and residents feel like they're not being heard. Every project continues full throttle no matter what anybody says. And even worse, there are no consequences when anyone acts and does anything wrongfully and willfully incorrect. Frustration is increasing, trust is decreasing, and the public is beginning to seek protection and answers from outside the municipality. I feel that's a shame. Lorraine Reynolds just gave an example of $300,000, an incident that's unacceptable, and no action has been taken for that that I'm aware of. Now, I'm aware that a lot might be happening behind the scenes that we don't know, but there's very little interaction. There's a huge gap between residents coming forward and trying to complain. So I'm going back to Councilman Voigt's um, request for an investigative committee. I think it's premature at this time when we can't even answer simple questions, when we can't even inquire about something and get an answer. We sit up here week after week, time after time, we send in emails and nothing gets answered. Nothing gets done. It's almost like a pick and choose. I've spent the past week trying to ask a question, a very simple question. If Tim Cronin said at a public meeting that there would be no lights at Habernickel, <coughs> I'm still waiting for that response. There is no communication, no interaction with anyone, I, I feel. It, it's really a pick and choose. If we say it in a nice tone, if we ask it in a right way, if they're having a good day, or if they happen to agree with us, we might get a response. If for whatever reason, I don't know what the reason might be, there's just no answers. I'm living proof that I, I think maybe residents feel that if they do ask something, there might be retaliation. I'm living proof that that also exists in this village, that if you complain, you might be publicly shamed. But that gap has to be closed. We really need to start answering um, people. There has to be a place that we can come to with our complaints, and definitely action has to be taken, because this is nonsense, that we keep coming here and reporting stuff I reported the application being misused and the process of open space last week. Lo and behold, this week, Roberta comes back and says, still gonna go full throttle with that, but now we're gonna try to do it in a better way, which is exactly what I've been screaming about all these months, but now what happens to Roberta for trying to push that through? Okay. Is there any disciplinary action? So I, I think that the first thing, let me just take one at a time here. We're looking at whatever complaints that have been made, and that's a separate issue. Um, as far as the current application, it's what was filed today at 4 o'clock is an intent to apply. It's actually not the application. The application is not due until October 13th. So what we've done is to ensure the process is appropriate. We're scheduling the public hearing, I believe, on September 14th. And so this is a process that is, we're working towards to get this right. And in the interim, on the other side of the issues that occurred for the 2015 grant application, we are looking at it. And as indicated earlier, a packet was delivered to the full council uh, containing all of the documents for our review as we move forward. So and as in regard to the uh, lighting issue at Habernickel, um, and you're certainly not privy to all of the emails, mm -hmm. um, those are being addressed as well. We are behind the scenes once again working to address the lighting conditions there. It was something that I personally drove to um, up there on, I believe it was Friday night, 
and was quite surprised to see how bright the lights were. And we're looking, we're working to remediate that. So we are working behind the scenes. And you're right, you don't always see all of that behind the scenes chatter. Okay, thank you. As far as the uh, intent to apply, mm -hmm. I understand. I, I understand that process. But at what point does the public get to say where they want the open space money to go? Because it sounds like that decision has already been made, and we're just going to go through the process of letting the public know that we'll be spending the money at Van S. So, what if the public wants the money to go somewhere else? Yeah. So again, I'll answer your question. And I'm not intending to answer all the questions, but I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll let me entertain this one. And then I just have okay. one thing related to the Shedler Report. I just don't want to get cut off. Okay. So in terms of the grant application process, this village council ultimately made a decision to move forward on a project at uh, Van Ness, Memorial Park at Van Ness. We were presented with three different options. Uh, I believe that Roberta, the village manager, may have reviewed those at the previous meeting. and. Then we saw the letter of intent to apply. And so subsequently, we decided the public necessarily doesn't get to weigh in on which or where, which project or where that money is expended. It's a project that collectively this council ultimately decided. And, and, we, and, and it was a good decision, actually, because it was based on uh, the best possible outcome. OK. The manager's report, going back to your point as well, where she said she provided, Roberta provided documents regarding Shedler. Will there be an opportunity to present my documents? Because I'm aware of all the documents that have been presented by the village manager, and I've repeatedly sat up here and said, I have documents that will say the contrary. So one person always sounds right until the cross-examination comes and another person gets an opportunity to speak and present their facts. So, we're, we're, so again, you are welcome to email everything to me. You're welcome to deliver a packet to each of the council members um, containing any information documents you'd like us to review as we move forward in this process. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably easier for you to email everything. And you can email all five councils, and we'll add that to all the information that we're reviewing. And we're happy to do that. I will do it again. I've done it three times. Well, I, that's why, I, I, unless there's something else, I'm uh, presumably we I, have. I'm asking for an opportunity. I guess I'll take it a step further. I'm asking for an opportunity to sit down and actually explain the documents. Because for some reason, I've done it three times, and it, it, it goes unanswered. Okay. You know, I say there's a historical component, and I provide a document showing that there's a certificate, and then I'm told there's no historical. So, okay. so once this council has an opportunity to review the documents, I'm, we're going to contact you and let you come in and review everything with us. Thank you. It's all Thank good. You. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thank and you. If I may, I'd like to expand on the um, the lights the lights issue too, because I think uh, last week it was brought up that I had written a story in the Ridgewood News where it quoted um, Tim Cronin as saying there will be no lights. And <laughs> Chris Rudishauser. Or Chris Rudishauser. Mm -hmm. Well, at first I didn't. I'm thinking I wrote that. But then I thought, um, I worked at the Ridgewood News for almost four years. I wrote on average about four stories a week. So if you think about it, it's somewhere around 800 stories that I've written about Ridgewood. So to just pull that up instantaneously, it didn't work. So I went home, I reviewed some of my, um, some of my clippings. And um, the reference was in, it was in reference to the lights on the field. Mm -hmm. Because at the time, uh, if people remember there was um, lights going at Steve lights going on at Stevens Field at the high school mm -hmm. there's a big controversy mm -hmm. about that there were lights I think over at Maple Park that were on too late so there's lit fields up all over Ridgewood and people were very sensitive to that at the time so that's what they were speaking about in reference to field lighting not parking lot lighting so that's what that that's what the quote was uh, that that somebody had mentioned was about lights on the field, not the parking lot. Okay, and I'm assuming that the application where the box was marked no lights, period, is also going to be looked into. Well, then that you have to look into. But okay. I mean, the Thank story you. that was quoted was Thank you. field lights. Uh, Tim, did you want to come up and respond on the lights? Did you, do you want to come up and respond on the lights? Good evening. Uh, as I remember it, uh, Councilman Seaton is correct when we were talking about the, uh, the different lighting uh, locations around town. That was with regard to lighting at that specific site. 
was never mentioned for lighting in the parking lot or on any of the exterior buildings. <coughs> so. Yeah, and I would also clarify that I think that there was some confusion and maybe a misstatement made that related to the fact that that clearly the lighting that we have installed and started to install a while ago in the parking lot at Habernickel uh, is not related to Health Barn. And I think that's where some of the confusion came up. I mean, Health Barn and the lighting are really two separate, uh, two separate issues. And they were on the 2010 plan Correct. that was approved Correct. by the council at that point. The lighting boxes were there, as well as... Uh, the stub ups were there. Yes, thank you. OK, I just wanted to clarify that a little. And Thank thanks, you. Tim. Thanks. And just just for clarification, I mean, this council really holds as a top priority our residents' quality of life and the comfort in their homes and their yards. And so we are taking the lighting issue very seriously, um, and we're addressing it. And in, in all likelihood, we'll at some point have a resolution with a formal lighting policy to ensure that this is not a um, uh, light encroachment into people's homes or. or light pollution, if you will. So thank you. Hello, Saurabh. Good evening. Good evening. Saurabh Dhani, 390 Bedford Road, Ridgewood. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, I have a few small comments. Uh, the first one is I agree with Marsha about this camera. I look more overweight than what I am from this angle. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my second comment about the lights, uh, the village manager mentioned that the lights at Habernickel were, were approved because people go into that parking lot and police can see that. But that happens at Willard uh, ground, that happens at a lot of the other grounds. Is it universal? Whatever we are doing at Habernickel, is, it, is that being done in all parks and grounds in the village? So just be mindful of the difference between a Willard property as Board of Ed, so we have no jurisdiction over how their lighting conditions. But other, Willard is just an example because we just received uh, an email from the principal about about that incident. That uh, there is outdoor work being done, and people are still visiting in the dark hours, and um, she requested that we be vigilant. So that's why I mentioned Willard. But is that policy of same type of parking light or lights? are being applied in all village-owned parking uh, parks. Yes. So I is, that, so. is yes. that same as all parks? So I provided a list earlier this week to the council. Uh, when we looked at the lighting at Habernickel, uh, Tim and company uh, looked at, and Chris looked at other lights. So for example, I can't remember them all off the top of my head, but Village Hall, uh, Dust to Dawn, uh, in most places where there are lights, uh, they're dust to dawn, and these are also in areas that may have homes around them or may have apartments. The West Side train station, dust to dawn. I listed about BF, which the is not The train station property. is different than park. My question was more about parks. Um, yeah, so, so my, my, the answer is yes in general, um, but we will look more specifically. But I, I gave the council a list of those earlier in the week. Yeah. And like I said, we're going to look at the whole thing right. now. Okay. Um, my third uh, point was something happened in the, during the first initial 30 minutes, there was a question raised about uh, this council is doing some uh, planning to invest or spend money on legal matters and do we even have budget? And Mayor Nutson, you were saying something and the village manager said, I could not even understand everything, but I think the comment was that no, we don't have enough money or we are already, or we budgeted less. But you don't have to go with the what previous council budgeted for. If you want to do something new, you can always find money for it. Right. So what previous council budgeted for, I don't think this council should be limited with that. If it's not in this year's budget, you can bond it and you can pay it next year. Right. So and when mm -hmm. if it's a million dollar litigation, twenty eight thousand residents is three to four dollars per person. It's right. it's not a lot of money for. So, um, and my last comment was um, about the. Um, the grant application that was submitted today. And what I'm trying to mention is, is respectfully, uh, it's not, I, I just want to, you to understand our perspective, what we see sitting there, right? What we see sitting there is last week, there were three proposals submitted to you guys, and you were told that, okay, these are the three proposals, we have a grant, and to us, it appeared that you're hearing about this for the first time, and you were asked to make a decision right there. You are our, we agree that, okay, the residents don't have to, to make uh, a say on 
which projects to pick, but there were three options, and you are our representatives. If there was time for you to go back and talk to your constituents, us, it's the representative government, right? So you are making decision, but that you are making that decision on behalf of us. Mm -hmm. So it, not everything has to be in the public comments, but you can poll people. You can. There may be a lot of people who would who are wanted more safe sledging at the uh, Citizens Park. Or there was another gentleman who came here, and he has come here a lot of the times that a park or a pond needs to be cleaned up. Can that open space money could have? So, <coughs> Yes, you have to make the decision on which project to be approved, but what we saw was that, okay, you were presented with three options and you were asked, you have to make a decision right today, and it just does not look kosher. So. Yeah, and it's a great point, and I think moving forward, we'll start to uh, project that those grant applications, and actually it wasn't an application that was submitted today, I just want to correct that, it was a letter right, but, of intent. But it's on one project. Right. It was just a letter of intent to apply, so it's not the actual application. However, I think moving forward, we get this piece of it, and right. so we'll project down the, the road and maybe start to look at what our options are well in advance of that. So I, I get the optics of it. Because and from I what, what we will see that, okay, there was one application that was done and all the public hearing will be for that project and it will right. still move forward. Right. So from our perspective, it's no different than what You're was right. happening for the last four years. You're right. Appreciate uh, thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Oh. Uh, good evening again, Boyd Loving, 342 South Irving Street. Uh, I'd just like to go on record uh, saying that I am opposed to any reduction in the amount of time that people have to speak in front of the council. Uh, a three-minute limit with an extension to 40 minutes is, is fine, but any proposal that would go forward that would reduce the amount of time in any way I would be opposed to. Uh, I can tell you that uh, TNEC did that. I believe they did that about a year ago. They cut out an entire public comment section. It got some very, very, very bad press, and it also upset uh, many of the taxpayers in TNEC. So please don't do anything uh, along those lines in terms of cutting back on the amount of time. Uh, with respect to the use of um, a computer to send your questions in, please remember that there are many people who uh, aren't really techno savvy and will not be able to do that. And there are many people, particularly many senior citizens, who do not use computers. So uh, please try to keep the time that we have to speak here whole. And uh, you know, people in Ridgewood say that taxes are very high. You, I, in my opinion, you get, you get what you pay for. You get those services. But people who think that they're spending a lot of money do want the opportunity to come in and talk to you about some things that are going on. So please don't touch that, or if you do touch it, make some adjustments so that the time is, is longer. Uh, with respect to the project that's going to go on or, or proposed to go on up at Van Nest, I believe that there was a comment made during the last meeting that the brick pavers that are currently there, which have names on them, families have paid for them and stuff, were going to be relocated to another section of the park. I know that the public uh, hearing on this is going to be on September 14th, but I would like to go on record now saying that by taking those bricks and moving them to another spot, uh, I don't know if the plan is that you're going to take up area that is now grass or dirt, but that makes more of an impervious surface and the water can't run off. Okay. So if you're going to put down the same amount of concrete now for the paths and walkways that you now have for bricks and then move the bricks someplace that there's, there's now grass or dirt, just be aware that you may be playing with the uh, uh, ecological system in terms of water runoff. I, I don't know if that's the plan, but if that is, just and please be not, able to yeah, that, that was, and we were, I think it was just being moved to a place where it's already yep. impervious, so it's. Yes. Okay, okay. Um, ordinarily, the manager has a little thing ripped from the headlines. I am surprised that she didn't hold up today's article, which uh, I don't know if all of you saw, but it's an article about Hawthorne and uh, the selling of water to the village of Ridgewood. And uh, there are some pretty um, negative comments about Ridgewood in here, which surprised me. But nonetheless, I think that uh, as the board of directors of Ridgewood Water, you should be aware of. And uh, after reading this 
and also seeing some comments that have been posted on social media this week about people who are using the online payment system for bills and then getting hit with a late fee because there is no notice that it takes four to five days for your online payment to reach the company. So if you pay on the last day, you're going to get hit with a late fee. Uh, I, I really think it's time that one of the council members be named as a liaison to Ridgewood Water and be really close to what's going on in Ridgewood Water. Uh, I'll just read you a couple of the comments here. Um, one of the council members, a council person from the borough of Hawthorne, tried to call over to the village here and get some information about water rates, and this is what he said. When he tried to call Ridgewood to find out its water rates, he got the, quote, runaround, and no one had any answers. He said Hawthorne has a list and breakdown of all its water rates on the web, their own website, but Ridgewood doesn't have any similar information. Quote, I wish they were more transparent, he said. I would love to know what Suez is charging them. And he goes on to say, somebody else goes on to say, is it your theory, Councilman, that if Ridgewood gouges their customers, we should gouge Ridgewood? So there seems to be a lot of confusion about what Ridgewood was charging its customers, what Suez is charging us. Uh, you know, this, is, this is not good press. Uh, once data from Ridgewood is the sub-headline here. So again, my proposal would be that one of you be appointed as a liaison to Ridgewood Water so we can get to the bottom of some of this. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Calby isn't here tonight, and I know he's only been here for a short period of time, but you know, there's a lot on social media about Ridgewood Water, and now this, you really need to look into it. Thank you. Thank you. So I think this is the first time I haven't read the paper on the day of the paper because we were so tied up, but about 8.30 this morning, um, Ridgewood customer service rep came running into my office waving um, that article and said, it's just not true, and here are our rates, and this is what I tell people, and we're totally transparent. Having said all that, um, we are in negotiations on water rates with them, and I just don't want to go any further in that discussion right now because, uh, uh, because we can't. Uh, and so Rich and I had a discussion last week about this. Uh, we have some concerns uh, about uh, the charging and stuff, and we need to work that through with Hawthorne. So I just... And the other thing I'd just like to add um, is that all the contracts have to be approved by DEP. They're all public documents. Mm -hmm. So if you're really interested in finding out what Suez is charging or what our relationship with Hawthorne is right now, they're public information it's as public it is. So you can get that, not necessarily even by Oprah, but through the DEP. So those things are accessible. Yeah, and, and just to mention that um, thanks to Councilman Walsh, we had the, uh, who had the presence of mind to separate out our agendas and to create this separate water utilities board of directors and then to segue into our regular public meeting. Um, I think we're starting to uh, refine our approach to this as well, and I agree with you that we should have a council liaison who reviews all of these materials as well. So uh, it was a great opportunity, and it really, like I said, is refining our approach. So we appreciate those comments. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comments? Okay. With none, uh, we'll have a resolution to go into closed session. Be resolved by the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood that the Village Council meet in closed session on August 10, 2016 at 8 p.m. or soon thereafter as a matter on the agenda can be reached. And the said closed session be held in the caucus room of the Ridgewood Village Hall, 131 North Maple Avenue, Ridgewood, New Jersey. Be further resolved that the matters to be discussed in closed session are limited to personnel matters to include Village Manager's Office. These matters are allowable under NJSA 10 Home 4 12 and SEC. And be it further resolved that the minutes of this meeting shall be made available to the general public when such matters have been completed by resolution of the Village Council. We have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you.